Okay guys, you've seen the title of this video, so you know it's supposed to be about memory boxes. But before we get to the memory box topic, I wanna do a little thought exercise with you. I'm gonna put something right here on the screen and I want you to take a good, close look and I want you to think about what you see here. Now, some of you might be confused and a few of you who recognize this image might already know where I'm going with this. Keep it in your mind and we're gonna come back to that in just a second. What's up fam and welcome back. My name is Marissa and today we are on my bedroom floor to talk about memory boxes. As a recovering emotional hoarder turned minimalist, I have a lot to say about memory boxes because for a long time, my entire life was like a memory box. After my mom died when I was nine, my dad just started putting things into boxes because they were special or just in case or to keep for later. And so I just grew up thinking that it was totally normal to just put things in boxes and keep them forever. But what I've learned on my five-year minimalism journey is that if we treat everything as if it were special, then nothing is really truly special. And we are not honoring our loved ones or ourselves and our time and space and peace of mind if we just stuff everything into boxes. Which brings me back to the picture that I showed you just a moment earlier. The image that I showed you is a famous painting that was made in 1929 by a Belgian surrealist painter named René Marguerite. And when I showed you the image the first time, I cut out the original French that was written below the image, but I'm gonna show it to you now. And when translated into English, this reads, this is not a pipe. What do you mean it's not a pipe? It's clearly a pipe. No, it's not a pipe. Don't you get it? Now there's a lot of ways that you could probably interpret this image, but one of the simplest is to say that a picture of a thing is not the thing. And likewise, a picture of my mother is not my mother. My father's necklace is not my father. The handmade quilt that I have from my grandmother is not my grandmother however much I want it to be. Whenever I get upset, we're just gonna drink some tea. That's why I have it here. And while these things can be precious, while these things can remind us of people and places and things that we've done, we don't need to keep every single thing that has ever belonged to us or our loved ones. So today I want to give you eight rules for dealing with sentimental clutter to help you decide what to keep, how to store it properly, and how to make letting go easier. And I'm also going to give you a sneak peek inside our memory boxes, and I'm gonna be answering specific questions from you guys about memory boxes. But first, I want you to answer my question, which is what is one of your most priceless treasures? Comment below and share a treasure that you have that you would never consider decluttering down with me in the comment section below. And before we get started, make sure to hit that like button and let's dive in. Eight rules for dealing with sentimental clutter. Number one, go for small wins. If you want to be successful at decluttering, you need to set yourself up for success. And that means that you should not start with sentimental clutter. Sentimental clutter is the hardest clutter category to sort and declutter and let go of things that are sentimental. So before you start sentimental items, Flex your decluttering muscles somewhere else, whether it's clothing or books or kitchen items, and let yourself get used to the feeling of what it's like to declutter and let go of something. And I always compare it to a marathon. You don't just jump up off your couch and go run a marathon, do you? Heck no, you have to start training, you have to exercise on a daily basis, but also know when to rest and take care of yourself and give yourself time. And decluttering is the same way. So go for those small wins in the beginning and that's gonna set you up for bigger things and greater success when you have to tackle the really hard stuff later. Number two, peel the layers. And speaking of which, Rome was not built in a day and you didn't accumulate all of the clutter in your home in a single day. So what makes you think that you're going to get rid of that clutter in a single day? When you look at my minimalist home, it took us many decluttering sessions over five years for us to get to this point. And each declutter was like me peeling back another layer of the onion. So we had a family member named Karina ask, is it okay to start with a bigger box and go smaller later? And I say, yes, it's 
absolutely okay. And remember, just because you keep something now doesn't mean that you have to keep it forever. And maybe you're gonna start with a bigger box and then later you'll find that you kept things, but you're ready to let go of those things at a later point. Number three, use it or lose it. Our stuff isn't doing us any good if we're stuffing it in boxes and hiding it away for years and years and years. Our stuff was meant to be seen and loved and used. And that's why now I have a use it or lose it policy. So when I am decluttering sentimental items and I'm looking at them, I'm working through a hierarchy of what can I do with this stuff? And the first thing that I want to do is use the things that I have. And some examples of this in my home are like my dad's knife set, which I use on a daily basis to prepare our meals. And also my mom's wedding ring that I wear every single day. And then if I find that I want to keep something, but it's not necessarily something that I'm going to be using, like putting to use, then the next level on the hierarchy is to display it. And things like my grandpa's antique jewelry box or the vases from my grandmother, those are things that I keep on the bookshelf in my office. And I get to see those every single day and feel a sense of love and pride and happiness when I look at them. And then the final level of that is the things that you want to keep that can't necessarily be used or displayed in your home, but you still want to keep because they represent a special memory. And that's what we're going to put into the memory boxes. Things like perhaps photos and photo albums or special kids artwork or baby blankets or so on. And Zen family member Prachi asked, how can I manage three to four generations of sentimental clutter? I would have you start asking yourself who and how. Who are you keeping all of this stuff for and how is it benefiting you? Are you keeping the things for yourself and actually using them? Or are you just keeping them because they remind you of the past? It's one thing if you use something on a daily basis, but if you're just keeping the thing because it belonged to someone in your past, then it might be costing you more than you think. Remember, the price of anything is the amount of life you exchange for it. And all of these things are costing you in more ways than perhaps even you know. They're costing you space in your home that could either be left open or that you could bring in things that you love into your home. They could be costing you time because you're spending time with upkeep and management of so much things in your home. And they can even be costing you money like if you're renting separate storage spaces or you have to have a bigger home just to hold all of the stuff because it's from so many generations of your family. So think about the cost of all the things that you're keeping and are you really getting any value from keeping those things? One really great decluttering hack I have for you is to declutter emotional duplicates. So let's take my wedding veil for example. A while back I was doing a big decluttering session and I really hesitated on decluttering my wedding veil. But then I realized I didn't need the veil itself because I had beautiful pictures from my wedding day and the wedding album that we keep up front in our TV stand to look at. So I didn't need to keep the actual item. Do I need this veil? I think I'm ready to let it go. This can be things like the clothing that your kids wore, travel souvenirs or collectibles. Ask yourself if you're keeping too many emotional duplicates and if you can remove some of those duplicates from your home. So I found more emotional duplicates in my memory box and I don't need so many pictures of the same photograph of me as a child. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the larger ones and cut it out and I'm going to go and shred the rest because I don't need this many of the same photograph floating around. Number five, separate the wheat from the chaff. It's better to have one or two valuable and meaningful memories or keepsakes than it is to have a thousand low value ones. So for example, when I started decluttering my sentimental clutter, I had boxes of cards, literally every single card from the time I was born. And out of all those cards, I only kept two cards. One of them was a beautiful fairy card that says, may all your dreams come true. And it has my mother's handwritten signature on the inside. And it's a power item that you guys know I have displayed on my vision board. And the other one 
was a Halloween card that I kept from the most wonderful Halloween party ever. And it has a ton of my mom's handwriting on the inside, has the entire guest list, and that is a very special and vivid memory that I have of my mother. I also have pictures for it. So out of all those hundreds of cards, those were the only two cards that I kept. Number six, set boundaries. One good rule is to set yourself a physical boundary for your memory box to keep your sentimental clutter from getting too out of hand. And that could be setting one memory box per family member. And then each year you guys can go through it together as a family and take a look at what you want to keep. If there's anything you want to get rid of, let go of, or if there's anything new that you want to add to the mix. And a lot of you guys have asked me if there's any particular size box that you need. And like I said, it really honestly depends on you and how far you are in your journey. I can tell you that after decluttering thousands of items and dozens and dozens of boxes over the years, what I have ended up with after five years is now this memory box. Everything else that is a precious memory is either being used in my home or it's on display and a couple other places that I'm going to mention in a second. Number seven is to categorize. And what I mean by this is to keep similar sentimental categories together. So like I have this memory box that is more of my private stuff that I keep in my wardrobe. And then in my office, I have a box with my special photos because sometimes I want to look through it with my kids more frequently, or I have to grab it even to show you guys on my YouTube videos when I talk about things like sentimental clutter. So if you find yourself looking for or reaching for certain sentimental categories more than others, maybe it makes sense to have certain categories, like I said, photos in one place, and then actual physical items like the ones in my memory box in a different place. We also have the very unique situation that we don't have any closets in our home. So it's not like I have a big walk-in closet that I can put my stuff in all in one neat place. Instead, we've had to put up Ikea bookshelves and wardrobes and other creative solutions to make storage in our home. So it's kind of been a case by case basis trying to figure out what categories of sentimental items go where. And finally, number eight, let go with gratitude. Don't let feelings like guilt or fear hold you back from letting go of an item. Give yourself permission to let go. And when I find myself getting emotional when I'm doing something like decluttering my kids' clothes or I'm going through my sentimental items, I find gratitude very healing and helpful because by giving gratitude to an item, you give closure to that thing and it makes the process of letting go much, much easier. And if you want more tips and ideas on how to specifically let go of clutter, make sure to go check out this video that I will link above because it's got eight different ideas for how to get rid of your clutter without feeling stressed out, overwhelmed, and guilty. Now let's move on to the memory box questions, starting with what kind of memory box should you use? Personally, I think any box can be a memory box, and the kind of box that you use depends on things like where you want to keep your box, how much stuff you have, and your own personal tastes and aesthetics. If you're keeping your memory box in somewhere like a basement or a garage that has moisture or maybe is in danger of flooding, I would definitely recommend that you put it inside a plastic bin with a nice tight lid to keep it safe because I know people whose basements or garages have gotten water in them and they've had items ruined when they hit a cardboard box. My memory box was purchased from the craft store Michaels on sale. They used to be in stores all the time. They were like $4.99. And it's just a very simple, sturdy cardboard and paper memory box. And then recently we made our boys their own DIY memory boxes and clever reader Helene spotted in my Instagram stories that they were wine boxes. Yep, I was actually shopping online and I looked at so many memory boxes for my boys when they said that they wanted to make a memory box. And I was literally ready to purchase some nice lidded seagrass bins when my husband saw me shopping and he asked me if I wanted to upcycle some wine boxes that he had. And I was like, uh, yeah, please. So I got some paint and stickers and the boys and I had a fun time painting and creating 
their own special memory boxes. And to make it even more special, we put hand, their print handprints on the outside so that they can remember and look back on the time that we spent together making these memory boxes as a special event together. I'm a big fan of using what you have. So if you find yourself with a lot of boxes or bins after decluttering your other stuff, feel free to repurpose those bins as your memory box. But it's also totally okay to want pretty or special memory boxes. It's really all up to you and your own personal aesthetic and preferences. In fact, since I spent all that time looking at memory boxes, I went ahead and I wrote up a blog post on this very topic. So if you are looking for an extra special memory box for yourself, or maybe as a gift for someone else, I personally think it would make a really amazing Christmas gift. Make sure and go look down in the description box below. I will link that blog post down below for you to check out with 10 of the coolest memory boxes that I found. What goes into a memory box? Another question that you guys had is what goes into a memory box? And remember, not everything has to go into a memory box. First, see if you can use an item or display it in your home. Things that you can put in a child's memory box include things like their first tooth that they lost or their first haircut, pregnancy ultrasounds or report cards. And adult memory boxes can have all of those things, plus maybe high school trophies or awards from sporting events, concert or movie or travel tickets, diaries or journals, wedding memorabilia, love notes, all sorts of things. I have to go show you guys this. Just look at how different my hair color is from what it used to be. That is crazy. True story, I have such a tiny head that sometimes I have to buy kids glasses. I bet these old glasses still fit me. Hey, it's pretty styling right there. Oh my gosh, that's so ridiculous. This didn't get bigger, but this got bigger. I have really bad eyesight, guys. And Zen family member Christina asked, what about kid stuff? If you have kids memorabilia, does it go in their box or yours? And I think that this is a great question to ask yourself. Who are you keeping it for? Are you keeping it for them or are you keeping it for yourself? Is it because you don't want to let go of the item that you're keeping it? In that case, it should be in your memory box. If you're really truly keeping something for your kids, then it should go in their memory box. Like I had saved both of the hospital hats for my kids when they came home from the hospital, but now that they have their own memory boxes, I'm going to be giving those to them and they can decide if they want to keep them or if they want to let go of them in the future. And I didn't mention this before, but also if you have a memory box of a decent size, you can have other boxes and bins inside of your memory box to help keep things tidy and sorted. Like I have some coins and other small things inside this old Chinese mooncake tin. It's looking pretty raggedy after like seven moves in seven years. I also have some smaller items that I've sorted into my iPhone, old iPhone case. So using boxes inside of your memory box or using vertical storage so that you can see everything easier is a great way to keep things tidy and show love and appreciation to your things instead of just tossing them into a box. Another question that I got from family member Shannon who asked, what about yearbooks? So I think when it comes to yearbooks, you really need to ask yourself, do you enjoy looking at the yearbook? Is that something that you enjoy having and looking at and taking a trip down memory lane? Do you even like the people in your yearbook? <laughs> Another reader commented on that post that they trashed their yearbook. And actually, I also don't have any of the yearbooks from my past either, because what I found is that the people that I wanted to remember, either I'm still in contact with them or I have other pictures that are more special than having a whole yearbook fill, filled with people that I didn't really care about or don't feel any more connection with after 20 years. And that way, again, I've gotten rid of the emotional duplicates so that I only keep the most meaningful and most emotionally valuable things. 
Okay, so after all of that, I just want to say that don't let anyone else make you feel guilty about being a minimalist but wanting to have a memory box. Memory boxes are so, so important. The things that we put in our memory boxes act like an anchor and they give us a concrete keepsake that functions like a window to a memory of a certain person, place, or time in our life because our memories are surprisingly fallible and they start fading with time almost immediately after creating the memory. While our brains have the capacity to store 2.5 terabytes of data or the equivalent of 4,256 gigabyte iPhones, our memories are already fading in childhood. And children between the ages of five and seven remember 60% of their early life events, but by the time they're eight and nine, they remember less than 40% of the same memories. And you guys know that I used to be a speech language pathologist. I have seen memory boxes come in handy so many times with adults if they have Alzheimer's or dementia as their memories start to fade, they start to forget things and their spouses or their children want to continue to help them try to remember and to connect with them. Memory boxes can be a great thing. And everyone has different levels of attachment to stuff, I get it, but I think it's still okay to have things that remind you of happy times or positive events or fun things that you've done in your past. And I never ever want to hear someone say that they regretted getting rid of this or that because they felt like to become a minimalist they had to get rid of that thing but then later they regretted it i am so happy that i spent all of this time decluttering and moving towards minimalism without getting rid of a single thing that i regret and i truly think that it's because i put a lot of time and thought into the kind of things and the work the deep thinking work that i'm teaching you today I hope you enjoyed this video on sentimental clutter and how to create a memory box. And if you're looking for more tips and ideas on how to deal with sentimental clutter, or maybe want to know how we got to this point in our minimalism journey, make sure to go check out one of these videos. And until next week, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.